guys, welcome to my channel again. You know it's the Joe Jaguar Show. Actually, I haven't explained in a long time why I call myself Joe Jaguar, so I'll just quickly do it now. My last name is Aguiar, A-G-U-I-A-R. So if you put the J in front and you take out the I, you got Joe Jaguar. Uh, second reason is when I was in my teens, um, I was in a band and that was my stage name, Joe Jaguar. You need to come up with a, you know, a stage name type of thing. Um, third is uh, my license plate was Joe Jaguar, uh, no spaces, and it just fit on a Jaguar. And I also, um, I explained that uh, on my earlier videos, I also have a Jaguar uh, jacket, a mug, uh, Angelus for um, one of the videos called, uh, she took in a homeless person or something like that. She gave me perfume for Father's Day, a Jaguar perfume. Anyway, besides that, let's carry on. What is this guy? What do I like about it? What I don't like about it? What do I think about it? So this is an Orion brand uh, scope. It's a reflecting telescope, um, but everybody kind of makes that size. So for instance, Skywatcher, Mead, Celestron, Orion, and I think now Explorer Scientific makes an eight inch F5 reflecting telescope. And this is a EQ5 mount. I would say medium-ish large uh, scope, eight inches is a good size. This is what they, what is recommended uh, if you want to view galaxies, nebulas, uh, globular clusters, the, what they call the deep sky objects. This is the recommended size, eight inch and above. Uh, now, if you're in a light polluted white zone or red zone like me, it, those, th those things are gonna be hard to view galaxies and nebulas there are some you can view but really those things you should be looking when you're out of the city but an eight inch size is a very good size very large now I have a dew cap on it I'll talk about that in a second so as you can see it's much smaller so again it's eight inch f5 How, what it, what does that mean f5 it means the diameter of the telescope eight inch if you do times five it's F5. So that's five times the diameter of the mirror. That's what you get. If it was F3, it would be like that. And F10 would be double the size. So in a reflector, you, you know, ages ago, like in the 70s and 80s, it was common to have an F6. Um, and now it's kind of normal to have an F5. Otherwise, it'd be too, too long, too heavy. And then the mount you would need would need to be more heavy duty mount. Uh, so the F5 is pretty standard for an EQ mount uh, scope. Um, although once in a while you could find F4. The only problem with F4 I find is it will be a little smaller about there, more a little bit more portable. It will handle the mount a little bit better or the mount will handle it a little bit better, but it's going to have lots of coma. So I personally think the F5 is probably the perfect range between wide field, portability. So anything more, it's gonna have coma. Like, so that's the problem. Uh, anything, even in an F5, the last 20% or so, the field of view is gonna have coma. Coma is gonna be, the stars are not gonna be pinpoint. It's gonna have, it's gonna be a little bit elongated. So the shorter it's gonna be, or the faster they sometimes call it, it's gonna be even more exaggerated. So an F4, it's probably going to be 20% more coma than an F5. Um, and then uh, an F6 has less coma than an F5. So uh, that's why I would say F5 was pretty much the standard for many, many years because of that reason. Um, it just is the best all around uh, as far as coma is concerned. Uh, and also a faster telescope or shorter, you need to be aligned, that's the mirrors, even more accurate than if it was longer. So I th guess that's where the F5 was just perfect all around. And it, being F5 is going to have basically a you know, pretty wide field of view, where for some people is, is important. Now this is a manual mount in EQ5. This is like the slightly older mount, nothing wrong with it, but it, it's fully manual. And you know, back then they had the aluminum uh, tri tripod versus now that you get the steel tripod. So if you want the steel tripod to be a slightly uh, more stable, 
under the same weight. However, the aluminum is more, more portable. It's a little lighter. So it just depends on um, what you want. Now, the only thing is, like I said, uh, basically every company makes this. Um, now, Meat and Celestron have gone the other way and still sell an 8-inch F5 scope, but on an go-to EQ5. Now, I don't like it, and the reason is why. Because the Mead one, uh, I think it's called the R8, which is on, the mount is the LX85, and the Celestron version AVX is what it's called. Again, it's just a slightly beefed up EQ5. Problem with those, it's about 1700 Canadian before tax, so you're getting very close to $2,000 for a 8 inch on an EQ mount. Now, even those two mounts are not really geared for astrophotography because the actual scope itself is too heavy. You probably would need at least an EQ6 on those. So, those are also visual scopes. Um, but anyway, you can find this model was a lot cheaper. Um, but now those two companies have gone the go-to route and I think really it's because they want to maximize their profit and so they're putting it no longer are they selling it on a manual EQ5 like Mead and Celestron used to now you have to buy it on um, the go-to mount which I think they just did it for profit they're making more profit selling it on the go-to mount versus in a manual EQ5 mount I prefer this setup you just point it north even if you can't see Polaris, if you pointed north, you don't have to be exactly polar aligned, but as you guys saw from all the videos I have done, my, you know, my building or my, the townhouses is on the north side, so I face south, which is the best viewing, but I can't see the north uh, or Polaris, so I just basically set it north, and that's it, look south, and then you can track on uh, both axes. The closer you put it to, Polaris or North uh, Pole, um, then you only have to use one axis, one slow motion controls, instead of two. But anyway, I prefer this anyway. Um, the, the manual mounts, and it's kind of a shame because all the companies are kind of going that way. So the only two companies left that make a you know eight inch F5 on the EQ mount is the Orion. You can still buy it and the i believe it's the explorer scientific the other two companies again you can buy them but it's on the go-to mount some people might like that but remember two go-to mounts cost double the price and eventually the software firmware you know will anything electronic like your phone your tablet your computer you know cost more eventually there's more it's more prone to having errors and failing Eventually, when the company stops, you know, making those mounts and they go to newer mounts, the firmware, you know, they're going to have less parts for them. And if you break it, you know, then you're out of luck because there are some mounts that you can strip out the go-to part and use it as a manual mount, but most you can't. So that's the problem with electronics in go-to scopes is that, first of all, cost double the price. It's also there's more prone to user not getting the alignment procedure right because again you got to put the latitude longitude a whole bunch of you know 10 minute process to to have a, uh, the computer uh, be aligned before you can you know ask it to find your stuff um, and again once the firmwares and all that becomes outdated uh, new stuff uh, I mean again you can use it for your own personal uh, use if it's not broken and it'll be fine but I'm saying if you try to sell something you know go to that's 10 years old or 15 you're gonna get less for it because it's just old technology um, and again if you break it and they no longer support it then what are you gonna do you have a mount then it's just you could sell for parts um, so I think really a manual mount it will last a lot longer there's hardly anything uh, besides if you kill the gears or anything, but should last many many years um, You can you know a lot of manual EQ mounts. You could probably have 15 to 20 years at least uh, you know try Try doing that with a go-to it's probably gonna have a lot of issues after you know the first five six years 
is when the issues are going to start to uh, crop up. Okay, anyway, let's get back to this guy. And this guy here, I think it's important to have a do cap. Now, you probably won't hear that too often, but if you see the focuser compared to the edge, it's really close. You're talking about three to four inches. So in the hot, humid uh, days in the summer or a lot of countries that has a lot of humidity, it's good. your mirror is gonna do up fairly quickly. I had that happen to me. And so even if you get a reflecting telescope, even Dobsonians, you should, if you wanna prolong your viewing time, just get a dew cap. And that way you'll pro prolong it at least another hour. So I think it comes in handy. I uh, just thought I'd mention it because I don't I hardly ever see anybody mention a dew cap for reflecting telescopes. They always mention it for SETs and Maxutovs, but not for reflecting telescopes. But anyway, I kind of like this. It gives you a large aperture. It gives you the manual slow motion controls uh, for it. Uh, this version does have a fan on the back, and as you can see, it's uh, powered by one, two, uh, 10 AA batteries. It could be rechargeable or uh, regular batteries uh, type of thing. You could put a polar finder. Later on, you could upgrade to a single axis drive or a dual axis drive. And what that does, instead of you manually having to move the telescope type of thing, um, it will do it for you. So when viewing at high powers, the planets or anything else, it's going to keep it in the center field of view and you don't have to be fooling around with it as much. Um, but anyway, I, I like this setup. I, I like it if you can, if you like the go-to version, sure, it's going to cost you almost double the price if you want to, no problem. But I like the manual version. You just point it somewhat north and, uh, you know, just use your slow motion controls to view what you're looking at. It's pretty simple. Nothing really can go wrong unless you break the gears, which is almost impossible to do. Uh, besides that, uh, this guy's a red dot finder scope, a two inch um, focuser with an inch and a quarter adapter. So you can use two inch eyepiece, inch and a quarter eyepiece, but really this guy is fairly wide being F5. It's only a thousand millimeter focal length. So putting a two inch eyepiece in there, you're gonna get some huge field of views. Um, even with an inch and a quarter being F5, you're gonna get some pretty wide field of views. But anyway, I kinda of like it. It's too bad that manufacturers are going the way of go-to. I think they should have both, one for people that just want a manual mount. Because uh, really, even if you get a manual mount in EQ5, and you put a polar finder and dual axis drives, will still be at least 30% cheaper than getting the go-to version. And again, if anything happens to that go-to, and it's basically garbage uh, most of the time because you can't strip it and use it manually most of the time. So, you know, and this mount can support uh, several different, you know, you can put a, a different, you know, SCT in there, a small refractor. So I think I like this version. Uh, again, that's what it is. I give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys on the next uh, video. Like, comment and subscribe.